<laughs> Can you look at the camera? And we're back with the Dr. Z Show on our new and improved layout system thing. And we're on Discord now. And join like us on our Discord server. server. We'll post the link in the description of this video and probably the next like five videos. Um, we can I mean, we can always just we can just throw it in there always. That's true. I mean, it could just be one of our links. We shouldn't though, because uh, anyone on the internet could just get access to it and then just troll us, and we'd have to do a lot of. And then we could just remove them. There's no, ways to get around this though. So like, I've, I've already done, done this on YouTube several times. After the story I told, and that's, that's why, why my Facebook account is uh, friends only now. After the story I told on Facebook about my recent encounter with racism, uh, my Facebook uh, was sent to friends only, uh, but a bunch of people found our channel and found us on YouTube, and I had to block a bunch of people because they liked being racist. So goodbye. Bye, yes. Yeah, yeah don't, don't let the door, door hit your ass on the way out. So we are on the Dr. Z Show. We do not like racism, if that was not clear. We are not racist. I'm, we don't really like prejudice or, or assholery of any kind, I'd like to say. You know? Ass assholery. Assholery, yes. Okay, so yeah, that's our first that's announcement, that's is we're now on <laughs> Twitch. Uh, and we will be using Twitch to stream two or more of us playing Stardew Valley. Yes. Greta is going to start a Stardew Valley for farm for us, and we will be and we will I'm gonna be show the beautiful it. wonders, the beautiful wonders of the cuteness of this farm. And I will do all of the fishing, because everyone hates fishing, and I got good at it. Hey man, I hate fishing. I like mining. <laughs> like, that's my thing, is I like mining. Yeah. I've not played enough of Stardew Valley to know what I like, but I do know that I am not bad at fishing, and mining is fine. I like mining, and I'm cool with taking care of animals. I think planting is oh, such a waste of time. and troubles is all that matters. Pigs? Well, hey, I love cheese. I love me some cheese. And then you, once you get, like, into year two, you throw some aging caskets down in your basement. Did you say Asian caskets or aging caskets? Aging. Okay, that's aging. different. Okay, that's aging. very different. That's a very important distinction to make. We're gonna... Yes! <laughs> Also, as my wife has said multiple times that she probably got from the internet, uh, you can control white people with cheese. Look, man, I'm a se I'll do almost anything for Havarti. See? We got one already. Havarti is the best cheese. She's right, she's right there about, about the cheese thing, not about Havarti. Havarti is not the best cheese. Uh, the best cheese is buffalo mozzarella cheese. Jacob, your opinion on buffalo mozzarella cheese is wrong. Although well, Mott's is good. But also is buffalo cheddar cheese. And buffalo in the sense that it is spicy. I get this really specific uh, block of cheddar cheese that has like peppers and jalapenos in it, and it's so good. So anyway, anyway, it's we're not here to talk about cheese! And we can be controlled yes, by cheese. this is and correct. one, we have a Twitch and a Discord server now, announcement two, we are white people who can be controlled with cheese. Uh, <laughs> announcement three. Jacob, it's your turn to give us one of our announcements. Uh, one of our announcements is that uh, our video recording now looks like how you, uh, when you're doing three-player multiplayer uh, locally, how the screen <laughs> should have been set up so that the player who uh, was like player one didn't have an unfair advantage against everyone else with the wide screen. Yeah. So you're saying in all of the Doctor Z shows previous to this, I've had an unfair advantage. Uh, yes, definitely. Okay. You've been able to. Uh, <laughs> you 100%. Able to... Yeah. No screen no, I... taking, please. Unless you're, you're playing, playing that game, game Screen Sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Screen Sheet's fun. Um, then, there was another I announcement. I mean, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Well, well yes. yes. Uh, uh, we will go so over after, that. We will go over that we'll, in a moment. We'll go over that, yeah. Um, the, the last announcement that I just remembered, unfortunately. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate, unfortunate that this is the last announcement that I just remembered. 
um, is that we will have some art for our channel soon for our uh, thumbnail. And what? Jacob, why did you... Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Um, a uh, friend of the show is going to draw us some fantastic pieces of art for our channel, and they'll be used in our thumbnail, and they will be up soon? Me? Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, but they will be up, and we it is on the way. So, uh, is the elephant in the room Elephant the Elephant? Because... Elephant the Elephant! See him blow! <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to say that. <laughs> yes. Okay, no. No, Penny. <laughs> um, so You're bringing up the part of my childhood that I want to forget. Watching He's commercials. So, this is going to be my protest um, until we do an episode on Shrek. Um, I, I mentioned it in the last episode. An, an entire, entire episode, though, on Shrek. Shrek. There's a lot of Shrek content. There's the five Shrek movies. There's all of the Shrek TV specials. There's a musical. There's like video games. We have uh, this is stuff my protest, by the to way. To talk about. Uh, <laughs> so I until it was a movie. I thought it was, I thought it was a fine the movie. first movie was good. The second movie the was second like, one's better. Uh, no, the second movie was better. I disagree. <laughs> after that, they didn't need to continue. Like, just, just stop. Why? I agree with that. This but isn't the Shrek episode. episode. No. no, it's not the Shrek episode, but we need to have one, and this is going to be here in some way, shape, or form until that happens. This is, get in the comments. Well, what about your important. lists? What, what about, about your lists? lists? My list? I took it down for this. This is more important than my list. I had two lists down there. This is more important. My values and my... <sighs> you had a list to remind yourself what your values were? No, I did not. Oh, okay, I was saying. <laughs> my list, it, my lists are only secondary to my. Like, is she still looking at it to be like they're on there somewhere? <laughs> no, no, no. I had, I had like my, I had like my artistic endeavors slash like writing things on one list, and then my like everyday tasks on one. I took a picture of it. Don't worry. Yeah, I, uh, no, I wasn't worried. I was... <laughs> huh? She's not gonna remember to brush her teeth or feed herself. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's lunch. a different Got it. list. Got it. That's a different list in my kitchen. <laughs> could you imagine though? Oh. You <laughs> underestimate the power I could, of depression. I could, but not the way you think. And yes, yeah. Brenda's is right. <laughs> you underestimate the power of depression and like quicker, definitely more seductive this bath is. is. <laughs> But yes, so why don't we actually, now that we've gone through all of our announcements, hey, and I've This is the fast we've gone through our announcements, announcements and I'm going to waste know. more time talking about how fast we've gone through our announcements, so that it takes longer for us to get into the show. Hey, what's the episode about? Theater! The theater? Acting! Not, not about acting. acting. Not really. Acting, acting is a part of theater. theater. I mean, but we theater is not always acting. acting. Sort of. I was in two things. If a show was just heck, if there were no actors, what would that be like? That, okay, wait, no, that show that you were in. Oh, what was the show you were in with Robert? Where you were, um, you were members of the crew, but it was part of the show. It was a one act. Yeah. I mean, ever okay, okay. Let's let's first start up. So there's lots of weird things with theater, right? Like there's the like Beth like, the Macbeth curse. Um, For reference, I mean, sorry, aside, aside. The, the Macbeth curse is if you are part of the show of Macbeth, you never say the name of the show. Uh, otherwise, something horrible happens. Any I think it's been it's been expanded to any Shakespeare show because when we did, oh, um, you don't say Macbeth. Strictly, you don't say Macbeth. Oh, okay. Because when because when we did Midsummer uh, Midsummer's Night Dream, we didn't say Macbeth. But we, there were, like, a lot of lines and, like, characterizations that resembled Macbeth. <laughs> and, and most of us had taken the drama class in which you study Macbeth. Right. So, like, she was trying to use the, she had to use the, like, Scottish play. Yeah, you say either Macbeth or the Scottish play. Yes. Or the ones we used. Um, 
Jacob, Jacob and I went to the same, the same high school, school, so we were in the same, same like, drama department. Brenna went, went to another place. Whatever. Yeah, Abby shared that in the play, or the musical Hamilton, uh, his life is fine until he says the word Macbeth in the play, and then he has the affair and everything goes correctly. That's probably intentional. You're right. Yeah. I, and I guarantee you, Lynn Manuel Miranda did that on purpose. Fun facts. Ooh. Yeah, yeah Lynn Manuel Miranda is a big fucking nerd. Like, he's, he's a, a big nerd. fucking nerd. He's yeah. got big nerd energy. Yeah, he. Yeah. He, anyway. wrote a, he writes rap musicals. I mean. Like, that's right. incredibly nerdy in the right way. Right. Side note. Really excited about the end of the Heights movie. When is that coming out? Was it delayed? We talked about it, like, I think in the year look ahead episode. It was in the look ahead, yeah. Uh, it should still be this year. I haven't heard anything else differently. I mean, this year has been a shit show so far, so we'll see. Yeah, who knows. Um, while I look that up, who wants to talk about how they got into theater? I think Jacob should go first, because I think he got me into theater, maybe. As is most. No, I think you <laughs> took, you took, uh, we, we were in advanced, advanced drama, drama together in middle, middle school. school. Advanced drama. Did you take was there a drama class before that, or did we just take advanced drama in eighth grade? I think I think, I, I think it was like a semester or a quarter class. class. It was like beginning yeah. drama. And then, yeah, but you just, like, studied, studied drama a little bit. You didn't, there wasn't, like, a show or anything. Yeah. Um, and we did Courtyard, courtyard both years. years. Yeah. The yeah. Courtyard um, show. So, that was the year. Yeah, so I got into theater because I, I'm the youngest of seven kids, and all my siblings did theater. I, all of them? Okay, okay, yeah, I was, that, was that was the one I was concerned about. about. Not, Not concerned, concerned, but, like, but, like thinking, like, like, maybe he didn't do it. Um, so, yeah, so I grew up going to their, you know, like, chorus performances and their plays and stuff, and as a kid, uh, as a kid, the only thing that I remembered was that some things were fun and had stories involved with them that I could follow, and others was, like, just boring music. And, that, and so I didn't, like, as a kid, I didn't distinguish between them, like, I didn't really have, I didn't think of, like, different names for these things that I was going to to support my older siblings at. I would just be, like, drug along by my parents, and I would... Oh, so you thought, like, a, a music performance was just like, oh, this is boring. Just a boring but, like, but, like, a musical or a straight show was, like, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and... Not in theater, but because my mom always did community theater, and I would like... Was so obsessed with that, and I was like, in all my like little early elementary school things, I was like, I'm gonna be an actress like my mom. <laughs> um. So then, in in my elementary school, though, in sixth grade. Oh, you're right. I, I forgot, forgot about this. Drama club, and they I had forgot about people that. come from the high school to come and direct little like one act plays that we put together, where we took a picture book. And we turned it into a play. I totally I forgot. forgot we went to the same elementary school, school for one year and actually did this. this. Oh, oh my gosh. Mr. Um, Wolf's Pancakes. Yes! Oh, oh man! I have a sweet hat because I got to be the wolf. Oh, oh man, I totally forgot, forgot about that. that. I, I did, did, I did introductory tech, tech for that show and I sliced my hand open. open. That's, That's what I remember about that show. show. The, the microphone stand, stand, I was adjusting it, like, backwards, of course, because I was six. I was sixth grade, and I wasn't six. I was in sixth grade. And, um, so I, ho I, I was holding the bottom of this where it, like, slides in and out or whatever. And the piece that it slides in and out. And I loosened it, and the top came down and sliced my hand this whole way. And it was just, like, it bled for, like, 30 minutes. Like, just... Hand injuries are the worst. My, my hand was, like, like blue, blue afterwards. I was like, am I going to die? die? Like, I'm, I'm very concerned. Uh, I one is bad. anecdote about getting into theater. Um, so, in theater, uh, there's probably people who've seen, like, Whose Line Is It Anyway, or you've gone to, uh, like, improv 
my Clubs. thing because they exist. Uh, yeah, uh, but it's also called theater sports. Is that genre of uh, I don't know a- acting uh, where you know there's rules for games for the actors to do comedy to. And one of my siblings was in a theater sports competition, and they would often have audience participation, whether it's to get, uh, you know, variables for them to use, like a name of a place or an object, whatever, for them to work into the skit. Um, Mm. And sometimes they would have the audience, while the judges were scoring everything, they would have audience members come down and play some of the games. And so we were playing this game called, like, Freeze Tag, where you would... Yep. A scene would be happening, and then someone could say freeze and come in and tag out one of the people that was yeah. in the play. Or, or like the last hit. Yeah. Um, and I was like seven, maybe, and I was up there playing freeze tag, and I, like, no one tagged me out for a really long time. And everyone was just like so happy that I was like, you know, holding my own in this game, and then someone tagged me out, and everyone booed them off stage. <laughs> and they were like, come back, come back! Okay, can we all for a moment agree that- Get wrecked. As, as theater kids, for whatever reason, watching little kids, like, hold their own in a theater setting, when you're, like, a teenager, is so fun. Oh, yeah. I mean- My favorite is when they project. project. Because little yeah, kids are loud as shit all the time, time unless they're on stage. Babby just wants to be on this episode now. <laughs> <laughs> Only a little bit. I have to make a risotto. But, like, oh, really no, the risotto. That, my mom was, because my mom was like, eventually started, like, you know, not doing just so much, like, oh, I'm in a play at the local theater. She started running the theater program in the area for kids. And so one year they did Bully Wonka, and the kid who played Mike TV was like, you know, I don't know, eight years old or something. But he had the perfect, like, loud, manic energy without being too overwhelming. But he, like, killed it as Mike TV. That's beautiful. And it was nice. just like, okay. it was such a joy to watch. I, I mean, yeah, like, I remember in high school, as a senior, going on behalf of the drama department like i don't remember where we went we went to the middle school i think i went to the middle school and i taught them a dance class were you in were you ah were you on your cappy's uh like review no i never did i never did the cappy's review stuff um i had friends who did jacob you did right yep i I got published oh Oh, really fun Mm -hmm. I, I considered doing it, but then I was like, I it sounds like a lot of work, and I'd rather put that work into the shows. Yeah, Cabbies, uh, for reference, uh, Cabbies were our school district? Was it, was it school district-wide, or was it something else? No, it's nationwide. No, it's oh, nationwide. Okay. I went to, I went to the Cabbies award show our my senior year. It's okay. nationwide, not in every school district. Okay, like- so... Right. right. Okay. Right. So, for reference, um, cabbies, if you don't know, or they weren't in your county, or whatever, uh, or high school was so long ago for you, you've forgotten it. Uh, uh, cabbies were like the awards. Think like Oscars or uh, what's the uh, Tonys, but for like high school shows. No, the 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 cabbies awards was at the Kennedy Center. Oh really? Our, our district was at the Kennedy Center. Yeah. So Fairfax. Um, Oliver, uh, Nova, um, was at, North yeah, North Virginia, it was wow, all okay. at, uh, yeah. I didn't know that because I never went to the, uh, the awards ceremony. I don't remember um, why I, I, I went, I but I went. Um, yeah, so it also, CAPIs, the reason why it's called CAPIs, it stands for Critics and Awards Program. Yes. Uh, and so that's why, and so each high school would have a team of critics, high school critics, You would go and you would attend plays put on by other high schools. Uh, You had to. And it was always the same season, right? No, it was. It was. It was any show throughout the year. But But it was was always like one one show. It was always either a straight show or a musical or yeah. Yeah, Was it was the schools that got to pick what the happy show was? Okay. You either got to pick your play or your musical, and. Mm -hmm. Um. 
So, yeah, you'd go and you would watch the show and you would write a review of it and you would discuss afterwards, like, because uh, it can get complicated sometimes, like, who the main character was, uh, who, like, who the main male and female characters were, who the main male and female supporting characters were, uh, who the best, like, who, what the best, like, comic relief character was, etc. You fill out this sheet and you would give them a rating. And then at the end of the year, you could, because it could be a long year and you're not going to remember everything, you could go back and look at all of your reviews from the different shows and then input your scores for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then based on those scores, uh, people would get award. you know, the diff individual shows and people uh, would get awards for, you know, their performance for that year. And it was a, a big to-do I, I think, think 2007, what year did we do Guys and Dolls? Guys and Dolls was before, it was before our time. time. Yeah, so it, it was maybe, maybe when we were in like 6th grade or 5th grade. Okay, so it was probably 2005 or 2006, but our high school did uh, Guys and Dolls, and that won a shitload of cappies. It won a ton of cappies. I remember seeing them like every morning in the awards case, just like, Guys and dolls, guys and dolls, guys and dolls. Like, well, and and, and that, that was, was like so, eight or nine yeah, you guys that have, year. You guys had several cappies that year. Um, and the only reason I like, I mean, I know that because I spent a lot of time in your theater department for recitals. Yeah, that's right. I was gonna bring that up later. I was gonna bring that up like way later, actually. Um, yeah. So. We'll, we'll come back, back to it. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to it. But yeah, no, we... TC never really... We tried caring about the Cappies, but the Cappies just never came our way. Um, this is Secret Backstory DLC. So if you're trying to get yeah. interested in the Secret Backstory information, follow, follow this. Yeah, we... I, I remember the year I went, the senior year, we did... That was our... Which I was so upset about. Midsummer Night's Dream was our... It was a good show. show. I came to it. Yeah, do you, you know, know why? I, th I thought it was good. No, you know why I'm a little mad about it though? The same reason you're a little mad about everything. You're just real no. mad. Because I composed the music that you heard. Right. And they forgot. They forgot to put that in for consideration. Yeah. Because I composed right. about seven or eight different tracks and there was like three other things in the original composition category and they all sucked i listened to them all they were bad i could have won a cappy and i didn't because they, they didn't put it in for consideration uh, yeah i remember hearing about this kind of a lot because they were like because halfway through the show they were like we need music what can we do for music can we just do like whatever like oh wait Bruno knows music. Bruno's this band. And then I volunteered because I am that I'm that person. I was that actor who did everything. Uh, also, the reason you were the drum major for your high school. Also, the reason I was the drum major. Uh, you can talk me into doing most things. Um, <laughs> well, Marty will get you farther. These I didn't even. I didn't even. I had an experience. So there was no cheese. There was no cheese. This was strictly like my senior year, and I wanted to just do everything. And I, but I didn't, but I didn't want to. I don't know. I, I didn't have the conviction and like the strength and my talents to be like, I'm good enough to do it. <laughs> if you use cheese to convince someone to do something, is it bravery? Jake, shut the fuck up. <laughs> So, so, if you've not gathered by, if you've not gathered this information yet by now, I am, I was in theater for the same, not the same reasons that Jacob was in theater, but my first, my first getting into theater was due to Jacob, um, and us being in the same shows, and then in the same drama classes, and then I was like, not interested in acting, partially because our theater teacher did not like me because I had a problem with authority or something. You do have a problem with authority. Uh, something like that. Um, you literally tell people that they can't tell you what to do all the time. I mean, no. I didn't in high school, though. I just didn't. No, well, yes, but I just didn't put up with people's bullshit. Our, 
<laughs> including authority. Well, well okay, okay. No, here's, here's the thing. thing. I, I love her theater, theater teacher. teacher. She was she's, she's a nice person. Nugent is great. But she would, she would say stuff, and people would be like, okay. And I would be like, no, no, no. See, that's fucked up. And so she didn't, she didn't approve of me calling her out. Uh, so I was very quickly singled out as a least favorite. Uh, but I was very good at tech, so I was, I was, I was very involved in tech theater. Um, and I, I enjoyed that. I think more. I did, I did act, act a few things. things. I was in Jacob's student-directed one act, Love, Death, and the Prom. And while it's not technically theater, Jacob and I did Broadway night together. Uh, which, oh god, it's horrible. The footage will never air anywhere, because I've watched it, and oh god, it's horrible. I actually haven't watched it. it it's bad. It is real bad. When we, when we did it later... All, like, because we did it a couple times afterwards, like, not on stage. It was much better then. But, oh man, it was bad. Including me having weird stage fright, because we'd already done one act, but I had, like, this weird case of stage fright. And forgot the second line. Forgot my second line. Yeah, no, we, we flubbed the, the dance moves a little bit. And... Yeah, well... Whatever. We did, uh, for reference, uh, Broadway Night was a show, uh, thing that our school put on that was sort of like a talent show, but you had to either sing, dance, or act something that was from a Broadway musical. And, uh, Jacob and I did Newsies, King of New York. Uh, which very rarely, I think we did it once on the show. Uh, we both did it in each other's best man speeches. <laughs> Uh, we'll refer to the other one as King of New York. Um, secret backstory DLC information abounds. Uh, although our, the choir director loved it so much that, loved our idea so much that the men's chorus did, uh, Seize the Day from Newsies as well. Fun fact. Right now, your introduction to theater. So, I have a bit of a weird introduction. Um. Shocking. Shocking. So, I, I was always interested in theater and musicals and stuff because of dance. Because of, from a very young age, I was introduced to the idea of singing and dancing in conjunction. Woohoo! Shocking. Uh, uh. Shocking, right? Weird how that works. Um, Although you danced parents, before you sang, right? Yeah, I danced before I sang. Um, and my parents were both very into musicals. My mom did uh, theater in high school and she was in a bunch of stuff. She was in like like pajama game and fiddler on the roof and stuff like that in every high school. Every high school did fiddler. Every everyone high school did fiddler. Everyone, everyone we did, did fiddler. Not, not when we were there, there but we did. did. Everyone did fiddler in the seventies. Like that was the show to do. Um, it's a good show. It's a great show. It's, um, it's good. Yeah. It's a good show. I love fiddler. It's, it's a, a good, good show. show. Um, but yeah. So my my mom did a bunch of theater. So she was always very into musicals and stuff. And um really impose that on me um but my first actual like theater experience was this is the privilege of being a kindergartner who can read i was a really prolific reader when i was like five or six and i could i could read weird out flex, loud but okay weird flex but okay but it, it kept being this weird thing that that adults would see how well i could read and and then read and speak the words that I was reading at the same time, which which is kind of a difficult skill when you're a kid, uh, like reading out loud. The so that's, continues. Also, <laughs> that's how I ended up doing the school news. And I got very into the school news for um, fifth grade or from first from kindergarten through fifth grade. I was a part of the school news. Um, and then the relevant thing is in kindergarten, they did a show. Our, our teacher, one of the teachers, Miss Greenberg, likes to do a show every year. And they, she wanted it to span all ages, all kind of races and sexes and stuff. And they didn't have, they, they could not find kindergartners who could remember lines and sing in time. Couldn't do it. But 
my but Miss Greenberg had seen me on the news. It was like, wait, she can give lines. So I was asked to like come down, like I was invited to be in the show <laughs> in kindergarten. So I was in this terrible like America themed show. And it like we all wore like jeans and, and white t shirts and we had American flag bandanas. And it was like all about like inclusivity, you know, everything. And like I had a whole lot of like What did like, you I say? Had, what? Jacob said something. And, and then angle lights for elementary school. Oh god. god. Oh, we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get, get there. there. We, we will burn, burn that bridge when we get, get to it. But it means that Brenna and I were child prodigies when it came to theater. Yeah, we were. <laughs> Why were so, you? Wait, why were you a child? Oh, because of the theater sport. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, no, and I'm like, I had like this whole little line because I mean, if you have this cute kid who can remember their lines and doesn't have front teeth, like you're gonna put them front and center and be like, look at me, I'm so cute, and I'm telling you the lines. What was? Do you remember your lines? I don't remember the lines. Oh. <laughs> that was. Anticlimactic. I was so excited. Only like 19 years ago. Why would I remember lines from 19 years ago when I was six, five? I remember a good chunk of my lines from Love, Death, and the Prom, but that was less than 19 years ago. But we're getting there. Well, we're halfway there. But that was my. You didn't have any. Oh, wait, no, you were in the show. Never mind. I was going to say you, weren't, you didn't have any lines because you directed the show, but you were also in it. Yeah, but that was my first experience with theater, and then I didn't do theater at all until middle school. I did some shit. Um, it was fine. Um, we did like Schoolhouse Rock Junior. Did everyone do Schoolhouse Rock Junior? I think everyone did. Because I think Rock our show, our school, also did Schoolhouse Rock Junior. We did Schoolhouse Rock Junior when I was like and seven. Aladdin Junior was in seventh grade. You were, um, you were. Uh, yeah, you were the captain, captain of the guard. guard. David was Iago, which was weird. Yeah, I had a giant scimitar that I bought at Ren Fair, and uh, that's why. And I painted it like at gold and everything. We bought spray paint. And I remember I used that scimitar for talk like a, international talk like a pirate day to get a free dozen donuts at Krispy Kreme. As a kid, that thing was really heavy. I was like, yeah, it's it's got some weight to it. Yeah, this is, is a hefty boy. boy. Wow, what a flimsy sword. <laughs> <laughs> it is made out of real wood, though. Yeah. Like, it's not... Good. If you, if you, you hit somebody with that, it'll hurt. It won't cut off their arm, but it'll hurt. It'll hurt. Blunt. It's a... It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a mace. Blunt. Technically, it's a mace. The shape like a sword. I mean, technically, anything's a mace if you try hard enough. Even a sword is a mace if you try hard enough. <laughs> if you're bad enough at sword play, a sword is a mace. You hit them with the pommel. You hit them with the pommel. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of something now that I can't use as a mace. Cereal? Like a, an individual cereal? <laughs> I guess that's more of a sleek projectile. But the box can be used as a mace. Although I did see somebody uh, make a hammer out of a Nokia phone. That was interesting. But I didn't, I didn't start doing uh, theater in high school until my sophomore year. Um, that was mostly because I was slightly bitter that I didn't do it freshman year. Um, because also because, freshman like, year. all yeah, of your free time was spent dancing. Yeah, like, suddenly all I had of free it. Time. Also, yeah, I had free time, so I did Jacob, uh, no. theater, and so I was able to do theater. Um, I also started taking the drama class sophomore year, too, because I didn't want to take P.E., so I talked, I talked uh, my friend Denise into also taking the theater class with me. Dean Ice. Dean Ice. And she, I also talked her into doing the musical our sophomore year and our senior year. Do you remember what the shows were? Yes. Well, Crazy for You. Yes. Crazy for You was our sophomore year. Um, we both played Cowboys. Um, oh, that's the... This okay. is the show we think Cowboys in, um, which, which is, is extra confusing because we were both competitive dancers, right? Like, I mean, uh, so uh, in in total of the cast, there were five people who'd like religiously taken dance classes. That's that's a surprisingly large number. Um. Okay, but 
but only two. I'm I'm considering. Consider, I'm taking into consideration where you went, you went to high school. school. That's, That's why yeah. it's a surprisingly large number. Well, so two of us went to one one studio, and then the other three went to a different studio. Did you fight? They were mad. Okay. Yes. So yes. I don't want to say that they were mad that we were better. They were kind of mad we were better. <laughs> but then again, we were competitive dancers who'd been doing it for... Since we were three, and we spent 15 hours a week rehearsing and, and dedicating our time to an, an activity. They were a little more casual about it. Um, they did one show a year, or it was like seven. Um, <laughs> like, it was nothing against them. They were all really great dancers. I really... Like, they were fine. But they got a lot of favoritism that was kind of undeserved. Uh, were you trying to kill your best friend? Are you Black Widow? Jacob, what the fuck? Okay, she's like, I was trying to punish you. Like, I could, I could read so good. And then I was also dancing since I was three competitively. Like, Well, I didn't start competing until I was seven. I can see where Jacob's going with that. But Jacob, sometimes you say stuff. You say stuff, and I'm, like, worried for you. No, I get it. I, I, I don't. I mean, I get it. There's but... a reason I love Black Widow. It's because her, her story is compelling to me. Same with Black Canary. I mean. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, my first my first actual... I did one axe, too. Um, so, I'd done the one axe. And then I did... I was in two one axe, actually, too, that first time I did... Theater. Um, so you were in two acts. I was in two acts. I was in. I said a student written one act. A student written one act. A student written. Yikes! Were, those, those were, were always Bach, a mess. Bach and Jones were really, really big fans of letting us take a creative idea and go. And I mean, my senior year, we did student written one acts. So junior year, junior year, we did a whole festival of student written one acts where we all worked together and we all like. <laughs> there was always a, a at least one student written one act when we did one acts, and it was always kind of a mess. It was very, it was always like very, like it was always written. It was always written by that kid that graduated, and then like. No one heard from for like five years, and then suddenly came back and was like really weird. It was always that guy, See, or girl, we, or whoever. When we so the the student in one I was in was um really bad, but Avi knows it was bad. Um, that's when I played Barbie. That was my name, Barb, Barbie. Uh, I had a terrible wig. I wore my costume was a a like tube skirt. It was this neon blue tube skirt, Uggs, a tank top, and a like a pink. You know the the Victoria's Secret pink pullover sweatshirts that everyone had in the like early 2010s. It was one of those and a blonde wig. Um, yeah, and, and I had to do my Valley Girl voice. The whole point of the show is it was like, the main character, Danielle, was trying to create the next best as seen on TV product, and I was the spunky best friend who was there to support her. <laughs> Jake, were you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, that sounds way too much like, uh, just a game that we played in advanced drama where like one of our assignments was to do an infomercial it also sounds, sounds like hot garbage <laughs> that's what i was thinking the it show was bad. a whole show was uh-huh. a theater sports game <laughs> that's, knows it was bad. that's i don't know who that is oh i was in there were two oh. i was in the other i was in the other student run one as well i played the like i played the like attendant at this train station and I just had to sit on stage the whole time. I had, like, four lines. But I had to sit there reading a newspaper for, like, okay. 30 minutes. It was bad. Um, well, was so we, I, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, so that's my first, like, high school experience. Well, we're on the topic of 1X. 
whose show was it where Bianca played the tree and upstaged literally every other, like, every single scene she upstaged by her weird blocking on stage? What? What, what was the show? I don't recall. There, there it was, was something... It was like something... It was like a girl's sanatorium, and like... I do remember that that exists, but I do not remember the name of it. Who directed it? Did did Keelan direct that show? Because I want to say that she did. She was at least in it. Is it... It's not Radium Girls, is it? No. It had a long name. It had like a really long name. Did the tree have lions? No, no, it was like, like it was like about this this, this like sort of sanatorium place for all these, these like weird girls and like one, one of them had like psychic powers and like one of them was like a schizophrenic and most of them were just like really weird. Okay, I think I know what it is. It's the infamous soothing system of Professor Mylard. No, no, that's not it either. Um, but she, so, so this one role that was in the show, Bianca, Bianca like, like she, she was like the, the, the quiet, like unas- quiet, like unassuming girl, like, like in high school, school actually. And, and then she, she was in the show, show and I don't think that she had any lines actually. I want to say that that her character has no lines in the show, but, but she, she just had like the craziest stage direction at all, like, like the weirdest blocking possible, and. Every single scene that she was in, the audience was, like, dying of laughter the entire show. And it ended up making the show kind of a mess. Because, like, one, like, people didn't think it was that funny when they were rehearsing. Because they were like, okay, yeah, we've seen this a hundred times. Like, it's not funny. Like, whatever it's going on behind us. So they didn't, like, they didn't take into consideration that the audience was going to be cracking up the entire show. They didn't hold. So, well, right, so there was no holding, and a lot of the lines in the show were missed, which was a shame, because all the people that were in that show did very well, and the show was put on very well, but they were all, like, horribly upstaged by this actor who had no lines, who, like, was hilarious on stage. That's the, that's kind of a weird struggle with, like... I don't know, background comedy? Amateur, like, I mean, also, like, like amateur theater. theater. Like, Yeah, amateur theater. Because we had to do a lot of that in, like, Crazy For You. Um, in Crazy For You, we, you know, the whole show is nothing but, like, these dumb, idiot cowboys who are now suddenly introduced to a flock of beautiful... It's it's like, like seven, it's, it's like Seven, seven Brides, Brides for Seven Brothers if Seven yeah. Brides for Seven Brothers was horrible. Hey, I love Crazy for You. No, it's, it's a good no, it's, it's a good show. show. I'm just comparing it that way. Yes, it's like Seven Rides for Seven Brothers. If Seven Rides for Seven Brothers was bad. So, so we had to like as so we walked this weird line where like we had to be on stage almost all the like all all the cowboys were pretty much on stage all the time. Yeah, and half the cowboys were females, um, and we all had to kind of ex- like. We had to take lessons on how to be, like, how men. to walk like men. Yeah, like, we had to take lessons. Um, I remember... Man lessons. I, I tried so hard to look less female. Like, I, I, like, I, like, tried to, like, pad and everything, too, and, like, bind. Like, like, I fully, like, tried binding and, like, trying to, like... <laughs> Make make my boobs look smaller, like more like pecs and stuff, and like make my hips look smaller. It did not work. Take um, yeah, and I remember several of us on on opening night decided we were going to make fake sock penises, and we had fake sock penises. It was good. I don't know where to go, like from <laughs> fake sock penises. Uh, what was your favorite show you were in? <laughs> yeah, what the favorite, our favorite shows we were in. Yeah, Boom. um, I'll, I'll go, go first since I wasn't like in any shows except yeah. for Love, Death, and the Prom. I guess like like what like shows you worked on too. I think is valid. Um, we were in a show though. What show was it, Jacob? Where Tech had to walk? We were we we had to walk back and forth across the stage for something. It was a scene. It wasn't. I know it wasn't Tangled Lights. Was, was it the pajama, pajama game? 
it wasn't a it wasn't a one act, was it? Was no, it was a show. It was a full up show. It was the same show where all of tech, uh, where Connie had like kind of a nervous breakdown uh, during rehearsal one day because she thought we weren't ready, and so we um, we lighter taped all of our full black shirts to say we love Connie, and came on stage at the end of the show. It was that. It was that show. That's that's what I remember. That's such a waste of lighter tape, though. No, nah, it was necessary. She she was like panicking. I remember hearing in the booth. She was like, "Why is the curtain closing? Why is the curtain closing? Why is the curtain closing?" And then all of like tech ran onto the stage and were like, "Oh, we love you!" And then like ran off stage. Um, during the final like you know closing. Yeah, I don't I don't remember all of the things that went on with tech. So okay. Anyway, so I'm gonna say damn Yankees because. All of these things... No. Some of these things happened during Damn Yankees. And the ones that did not happen during Damn Yankees happened during Tangled Lights, which was a show, Jacob and I's senior year, that was written by the favorites in the theater department and was... Sorry, I love you guys. Most of you. Some of you. A few of you. I thought it was written by the two teachers. No. They, they had a student's council that helped write the show. Um, but it was a fucking mess. It was, it was a mess. And Jacob can attest to the show being a mess. Can can you can you attest to that, Jacob? Uh, so that I'm not just like ranting that oh it was bad and yeah. yeah. Okay. So things things about that. Uh, people's experience was very different. Like everyone who's in a position of authority during that show had a horrible time and hated everything about it. Um, I was just in the show, and I got this sweet elf costume that let me go visit my sister, who was in, like, the ICU for crazy pneumonia. And so I dressed up as an elf and, like, went and sang Christmas carols to her and a bunch of people in the ICU during Christmas. So that was really fun. Um, Did but... you play the, like, Jewish character? Yeah. I yeah, see, this is the fun part about Jacob's character. character. Yeah. So I... <laughs> yeah, um, so Abby and I actually, like, we were looking through uh, photos that I had from that show. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. We, that show was heavily photographed. photographed. We had no idea what the plot even was, because I had forgotten. And then I was noticing that I was a bunch of different characters. There were three like, plots. There um, were three plots going on at the same time. time. But... Um, but well, in one of them, I was the fiance of this girl who ran a like a kids youth service program thing. She um, was Hindu. I remember, I remember that. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, because, because you, you took, took her, her, your character took her to your family's house, and they, they fed, fed her like brisket or something. something. Yeah, brisket. I forgot. That was the end of it. That was the end of a scene, and it's just. I remember the. I remember the lights going down on her like horrified face, being like. Oh, it should never have been that important. Oh man, I forgot that the word brisket even existed. I tried to burn it out of my consciousness. It was bad. It was bad. Um, so, uh, oh, but I enjoyed being in the show, and then because we used, because uh, it was a musical, and we just used music from other things, it ended up being like a charity production, uh, so that we could get around copyright stuff, um, and they, it, it was so it ended up being like this big it ended up being this like big canned food drive. Um, yeah. I'm there the, there's a there's the picture of all of the crew and actors with like the amount of food that we had, which was like a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. So that was cool. Um and and we did it it was a joint production with the middle schoolers. So anyone everyone who's in any position of authority, including the tech people, oh. the middle schoolers just hated everything because they had to deal with their shenanigans. Uh like You have no idea. And when you're a middle schooler, like when you're a middle schooler doing theater surrounded by other middle schoolers, it's fine. But when you're a high schooler doing theater with middle schoolers no, less, less fine. You're used to at least, like, a certain level of maturity. Like, Although, to be fair, I did train basically the entire set crew for the next, like, four years during that show. So, you're welcome. So here's, here's 
here's my list. Also, the last thing on my list was from Tangled Lights. Um, almost shattering your kneecap because an actor missed his cue to come on stage by like three minutes. Do you remember who that was? The actor who forgot? Yes, because I... I or during the show? It was during the show. It was during a show, and I think it was opening night, but I'm not sure. Because I remember I was on mic... I was on mic on stage left. Left. I was on stage left, I was on mic, and I was like, where is this actor? And I was about... I, I took the mic off, and I gave it to whoever was assisting me on that side... And I was about to go into the boys' dressing room to be like, where the fuck are you You're supposed to be on stage right now? I went towards the door. I went towards the door. The door flung open and slammed me in the knee, and it sounded like a gunshot. Yeah. Every single person in the auditorium, in the booth, in the cast, behind, backstage, everyone heard it. And my... I to this day my level of self control in not screaming every single piece of profanity that I knew at the time still amazes me because it was one of the single most painful things to ever happen in my life. The entire next day I walked with a limp. It was horrific. Uh, this isn't supposed to be shots fired, but I'm guessing it was either Carter or Ian. It, it was, was a short kid. kid. That's, That's what, what I remember. Oh, was it a middle schooler? I want to say that it was... Because uh, there was that other kid. I don't, I don't remember. remember. I don't remember who it was. was. I, don't, I don't... Whatever. I don't remember who it was. But... Point... That that's that's on my list of like worst things, worst and most interesting things to happen in theater. And that was during. Was it Justin? Jesse. Jesse. It might have been. It might have been. I know, I know him when I see him. If I see a picture of him, I'll know. Um, we'll look into it later. Not important who it was, but I was curious to see if you remembered. So. Also during that show, hiding on stage on a rolling post office desk and remaining completely silent. We built a post office desk that I had to hide inside of because we could not get all of the stuff for that, the post office scene that we needed on stage and get off stage in like an acceptable time. So we hollowed out the post office desk that we built and me and the other actor that rolled it on stage had to hide inside it during the scene. And you and the postmaster character are on are in that scene for like ten minutes. The second scene you're in, you're in that scene for like ten minutes. And those are the most agonizingly silent ten minutes ever. Because you're just sitting there huddled next to this other actor who didn't or next to this other character or set bleh, set crew member who like hadn't showered in three days and smelled like rotten eggs, and just, like, it was not a good experience, and I'm going to complain some more about it. May I one-up? I, I'm, I'm not done. No, there's more on the list. Because I, I got to get, get through this list. Can I one-up you with that story? We okay, okay, go, go ahead. ahead. So junior year, Arm, junior year, we did The Island of Dr. Moreau. Ooh. I played the Puma. <laughs> right. You know, his, like, magnum opus, whatever. Again, I... We had this rotating set piece, and it had four sides to it. I've heard the story. I don't, I don't think Jacob has, but I've heard, heard the story. Yeah. And so it was, like, four different scenes. And one of the scenes on it was his laboratory. It was Moreau's laboratory. And since I was the puma, I had to be in the laboratory. And we wanted me, like... They wanted some kind of table to fit on there, but we couldn't fit a table, like, in the so in the space. Um, and we didn't want to, like, they didn't want to bring a table on, because that was not part of the... They wanted the, the cool effect of going through the door and the scene changing. Mm -hmm. So, instead, they took a sheet of, like, thin plywood, like, set plywood drilled 
they, they, they've drilled belt loops into it for your waist, your ankles, your wrists, and my, and my neck. And they strapped me to this board. And I could not get in and out of it myself. I had to have the, the tech people uh, strap me in and out of this thing. But I had to spend the first like 15 minutes of the show attached to this board on this set piece with the two tech guys who were spinning the big thing. They had to strap me into this board, <laughs> which everyone called the sex board. Of course. <laughs> In high school, of course. That. Everyone of course called they the called sex it board. That. Yeah, of course they did. We, see, the guy who played Moreau and I called it Torture Board by Hasbro. Um, we were trying to make it like the new fun, tor like the new fun game, the Torture Board by Hasbro. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> of, yeah, infomercials. Um, so yeah, I had to be strapped to this fucking board for like 15 minutes of the show, and I had to have I had to have my peers strap me into this board, and then I had to stand on stage looking unconscious while strapped to a board. Okay, that, that okay. So the other. The other things on my list here are, um, so, got almost shattered my kneecap, being in the office desk, um, having sex in the costume loft, that's all I'll say about that, I'm not gonna get into details, um, and then, yeah, get over it, you knew that already, um, everyone had those kids, there was one in every show, at least, I wasn't in the show though, I was in tech, <laughs> It, it was, was with, with an actor, though, so does that count? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. And, and, tech, and it still counts when you're in tech. All right, point. Uh, the, the other two were during our freshman year. Uh, freshman year, we did Damn Yankees. I was in tech also during that. Um, but the other two are accidentally setting a chair on fire. We were striking the set, and we had chairs, and we were originally going to build the chairs out of, like, they were going to have wicker seats. Uh, but we couldn't secure enough, like, wicker material. So it was just, like, sort of hanging... Alright. So it was just, like, sort of hanging out in the, um... In the costume... Or not the costume, the, uh... In, like, the set building room that we had. Um... And so we were striking the set, and we were tearing the chairs apart onto where this, like, wicker was just hanging out on the floor. And... That part of the floor wasn't, like, tile, like most of Backstage was, or, like, that weird laminate tile stuff. It was concrete. And so we were taking props through there to go open the prop loft, and one of the props was, like, this big rock. I don't even think it was used in the show. It was just hanging out in the set shop. Um, but it was, like, a big rock, and it had, like, some stuff painted on it or whatever. And someone dropped it, and it struck against the concrete and sparked and set the wicker on fire, like, basically immediately. And it just up in flames. So everyone that was in the, the set shop at that moment had this moment of, like, oh, shit. Uh, luckily, somebody grabbed the fire extinguisher and put it out, and we didn't get in trouble because no one ever found out about it. Until now. Well, until now, but sue me. Uh, the other thing was, what was the other one? There's one other, oh yeah, also for Dave Yankees. We built a house. It's on stage for a total of 12 minutes. During the beginning and, during the beginning and end when he is the old man. Uh, yeah. We built, do you remember, do you remember the house that we built, Jacob? Yeah. I remember the house. On wheels. We built a house and put it on wheels and painted it, and it was like the some of them. It was the most intricate set piece I think, other than the locker room. Literally, we did the same thing for yeah, the was a spinning house. It did unfold into a different set piece, I think. Nope. Ours was just ours was just this house that was used in two we scenes. We were really big on multi-purpose set pieces. We like, were, for the most part, 
that is the only set piece that I know of that has only that has gone such a massive undertaking that has only ever been used once. And striking it was the most heartbreaking part of my high school life. Like tearing that thing apart. That was also the show where my first girlfriend broke up with me during the show. On stage. Like during the performance? No. But I remember the I remember the rest of the it was like after opening night or like right before opening night she was like I think we should break up and I was like okay and then I remember it being really weird between us for like a couple months and especially like during the show yeah ah anecdote fun fun fact Jacob what was your favorite show weirdly enough uh. Like, it was the, I only did tech uh, for half a freshman year, um, and you did? my favorite, yeah, well, my favorite show was Tech Over Buffalo. Oh. Yeah, I did, I did tech for... That show's a mess. Show. It was a lot of fun. And no, I mean, no, no, the show was very good, but the show itself is a mess. Yeah, it's a weird, it is a weird show. Um, but also, I auditioned for that. Uh, ah, I love this story. Like, that's fun. Uh, there's, uh, there's a line that the main character says about like some kind of affair that he had or whatever. Uh, and <laughs> my Bless sister you. told me when I delivered the line because um, he has the affair in like Cincinnati. Uh, she said that I should like look at the, like straight at the audience and go, "It was Cincinnati." Um, <laughs> And I did that, and uh, the drama teacher groaned, and I didn't get the part. Um, That's not why you didn't get the part. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I was just, I was tiny and inexperienced. And, and there were not a lot of actors. There, there were not a lot of actors in the show, and I think everyone in the show that year was either a junior or there were like two juniors, and all of them, all the rest of them were seniors. Yeah, well, which is which is fair. fair. Like yeah. sure. Like it's it's funny because I like I was the lead in curtains and that wasn't even my favorite part. Like that wasn't my favorite show to be in. It was. I I remember very little of curtains. I remember very little of us doing curtains. I don't know why. I remember the least from that show. I think. My favorite show was the chorus line. Was it really? Yeah. All the shows that TC did while you were there, and your favorite one was a chorus song. Because I already had such a love affair with the musical in and of itself. I cannot imagine a high school doing chorus line, though. And you guys didn't... We did a chorus line! We had a conversation about this. You guys didn't take anything out. We changed a couple words. Okay, so like, that... We didn't say click the ass. We said this and that. And she just pointed and gesticulated. <laughs> that, um, that, sh that, that that song itself should disqualify a chorus line from being able to be done in high school. Because it, that is rough. Shit, Richie. We said, damn, Richie. Which is a weirder line, which is a weirder word to do harmonies with. Like, it just didn't sound as good as shit, Richie. Like, <laughs> Jake, um, have, you, have you seen a chorus line? No. Okay. okay. But but tell them the story, story about the song. song. So, so... Which song? Because... Tits and Ass. I feel like, it's I feel like it's literally called that. that. Yes, so the song is called Tits and Ass. Um, and the song is sung by Valerie, who is very proud of the fact that she got plastic surgery done. Um, uh, well, I think this song is technically called Dance 10 Looks 3. Um, dance 10 looks, the, the, like, first line of it is, dance 10 looks 3, um, but I'm still on unemployment, dancing for my own enjoyment. The idea is that she kept auditioning over and over again, and on every single one of her, like, cards that she would get back about her audition, it would say, on a scale of 1 to 10, from dan on dance 10, on looks 3. So, she got plastic surgery, she, she improved her butt, she got a nose done, she got her job, she got her ass done, and now her life is better. Have it all done! <laughs> Honey, take my word! <laughs> uh, and so, yeah. like, and that tits and ass are said, said in that song, like, probably like 50 times. times. Yep, and that was one of the, the roles, so 
when we did our auditions for it, there were five roles for the females that were not immediately cast. Every other role was cast. And I know kind of part of it was because I actually succeeded in my audition. Um, like, I know that. Because uh, there's nothing funnier than watching people who you've known for three years at this point and who know that you don't audition well. There's nothing funnier than watching them go, Huh. Like, while you're auditioning. Like, while you're standing there singing. Who did you play in that show? Uh, I played Bebe. Uh, Bebe Bensonheimer. Um, if you're familiar with the song At the Ballet, yeah. she's the one who thinks about how ugly she is. Okay. Mother always said I'd be very attractive when I grew up. Yeah. Who played Valerie? Is it somebody uh, I Anna. No, you did not know Anna. Okay. Um, Anna... So, Anna didn't want to play. Um, <laughs> Val. So here's... here's no one wants to play that character, though. No! No, no, no! There was someone who didn't want to play. Okay, so here's what happened. I wanted to play Cassie. Anna wanted to play Diana, who sings, um... What I Did for Love. Um... So Anna wanted to play Diana, but she played Val. And then um, the girl who played Cassie, Leia, wanted to play Val. So, like, the three of us kind of had this weird, like, I don't know. None of us are terribly happy with the roles we got because Leia was not super prepared to do a three-and-a-half-minute dance solo. Um, she did fine. Um... Anna didn't want to sing about her tits and her ass. And Leia was like... And, and I was obviously kind of prepared to do a three and a half minute dance solo and didn't right. want to sing. And, and as someone who was not a trained... Like, I wasn't a trained singer. I didn't do... I couldn't harmonize. Like, that was a thing I didn't learn until my senior year because no one had spent any time working on it with me because they didn't need to. I, I was never... My singing, singing was never relevant enough in the show. So they were just like, like yeah, sing the alto part. If you can't get the harmony, sing the soprano part. part. Like, but ideally sing the alto part. And I was like, okay, whatever. But suddenly I, was, I now got the difficult alto part in the harmonization. So we actually switched the harmony. So I sang the lead. And then the girl who, sit, who was Maggie sang the difficult part. And then there was the, the low tenor alto and she, she was great. great. And, and they, they were both incredible singers. So I'm with two incredible singers, and I can't sing as well as them. So I had to, I spent lots of time, like, just with the choir teacher, and he was like, I know you can do it, I just have to teach you how. So he and I spent a lot of time just together learning how to sing, like, properly. <laughs> um, and he was, like, really proud that, like, I was holding your own. Holding my own with these, with two of his favorites. These, these two were like his favorite singers, and like there I was holding my own, sounding decent enough with them. Um, yeah, no, but it was my favorite show. I mean, like, it's all about dance. It's all about. I mean, it's called the chorus line. <laughs> it's called the chorus line. The whole concept of the show is that you are in a line auditioning to be in a show. In the background of a show. So it's like, there are like 18 main characters. There are. But they're not, it's, but it's not like Tangled Light's 18 main characters. It's like, no, it's each character, it's basically each character comes up and has their own piece of the musical. Yes. You, you kind of learn a bit about each of these people. Like, and there's a different struggle to all of them. Like... And it's, it's not like, like Rent, 18, 18 main characters, where they're no, all, like, doing drugs and having sex with random people. It's, like, less extreme. Yeah, it's... Like yeah, it's very yeah. Yeah. And then, and then there's a lot of over, over, uh, overlapping as well. Like, there's a lot of songs where bits and pieces come through. Like, there's a whole song about growing up, and the, the lines are all sporadic, and everyone kind of sings in their own part. It's so hard to choreograph. Or, like, the hardest was... 
the, the that's the, the song one comes from uh, a chorus line you know one singular sensation that mm-hmm. and there's a before we even do that number there's one where we do the first verse of one and then it's we are doing the dance rehearsals, and instead of singing the song, you're hearing our interior monologues. So instead of like singing the lyrics, it's like up, down, shoulder, right, like, and and it jumps from person to person. So everyone has to fit the rhythm. And if you miss your line, it sounds wrong. And it was so hard, and we forgot to and we forgot to practice it. We forgot to sing it until Hell Week. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> and it was rough. But, but we, we, we did, did it. it. I mean, I got to choreograph for it, too, um, which, which was really fun. Yeah, yeah. I really loved the chorus line. So, Jacob, your, your favorite show? show? He said it was Moon of Buffalo. Oh, oh right. Okay, yeah. yeah. He didn't, talk, he didn't talk about it for seven centuries, centuries so that's why. Because <laughs> he wasn't in the show. Yeah, we, 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 we will talk about our experiences. experiences. When, when it's, it's all said and done, Tangled Ice is probably my favorite show because, show because of other things that happened, happened not because of the show itself. But, but I mean, it was my senior year. Like, like, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I guess kind of going off of that, too, in a different way, we, we mentioned it. What was your favorite role to play? Mm. Oh, uh, I was a dead body. <laughs> played dead body in high school once. Yeah, and then in the one act, like the next year, I had a line in that show where I said I played a dead body in high school. And Is that an actual line from that show, that show or yeah, did you add it? Real line for the show. We didn't shoehorn it in. It's a real line in that one act. That's, That's awesome. awesome. I was in middle school when I played the dead bodies, so like... You were the dead body in Arsenic and Old Lace? Yeah. Arsenic and old boys. I played the, the two dead bodies that get like put in and out of the love seat or the window seat. Um, and then I hit my head when they were putting me down in once on uh, one of the hinges. So you actually died? Pokemon to make sure I didn't have a concussion. They did what about Pokemon? They asked, they asked me questions about Pokemon to make sure I didn't have a concussion. Okay. My favorite role. Uh, go, go ahead. Go. No, go, go ahead. No. Okay. Um, I think my favorite role is probably I was as difficult as the show was. I played um, Ina in No Exit. I played the Spanish lesbian. Um, no Exit is a very interesting show. It's a wild show. It was very difficult, and none of us could remember our lines. <laughs> We all knew the plot of the show, and we knew the important lines, but for whatever reason, none of us could remember the lines. It was It's a hard show, especially for high schoolers. Um, yeah, so Fair. it got to the point sometimes, like, even towards the end, like, some we, we'd be on track, and then one person would miss a line, and we were fucked. So we'd have to, like, start filling in lines of information that had been missed, and then, like, it's kind of... It, like, it was a weird pseudo-improv. It was a disaster. It was a disaster. Just, just saying. But people enjoyed it. But people enjoyed the show. Right. Like, like I, I, someone walked up to me and they were like, I know how No Exit's supposed to go. And you got there. <laughs> show your work. It was unintentionally funnier than it should have been. Because... There was also, like, a lot of sexual tension, which there's supposed to be some, but there was a lot of sexual tension because we were all yelling at each other. Um, cause I, so I'm supposed to be... So the, the... He wants to fuck the, the Swiss girl. And I also think she's pretty. That's and different. I'm like, that, those are, like, different yeah. levels of... Well, attraction. The, the reality, but the re, the reason why she only thinks she's pretty and like says that is because she knows she's not that the other girl's not going to be into her. Um, because being a lesbian was permissive and right. You know. No, no I, I know the show. show. I'm I'm, I'm a, a well, I'm like aware of it. I don't know the show. But I'm like aware. Of yeah. So that's the the hell the you're plot. creating. The idea, yeah, is the idea that I am making their lives a nightmare because they clearly want to fuck, and there's a moment where they almost make out, 
And then I just I just had to sit there and watch them. <laughs> it was great. It was very weird. Not Jacob, have you seen or do you know of No Exit? Nope. It's where the line "Hell is other people" comes from. Because that is the famous last line of Sartre's No Exit. Jacob, you're dishonoring your family. It's okay. You brought it's dishonor. An, it's yourself. like it's one of those like. Oh, that was super. Sorry, for a second. Uh, something just super weird happened. Like Claire was walking in the background of Anthony's. And uh, as soon as yeah, as soon as she crossed, like Abby showed up behind me. <laughs> that was very so, weird. Like, walking across the entire frame. <laughs> Good. It was very weird. Um, my favorite part is the only part of me being on stage that exists. Uh, I think, no, I was in the, the one act in advanced drama in middle school. Um, but I, God, I hated that show. Uh, the omelet murder case. Horrible, horrible show. Horrible one act. Our lead was sick that day at school and did not come to the show. Um, point. So I was in Jacob's one act and played like a million different characters. Four different characters? Three? Three or four different characters. But my favorite character of the characters that I played was the character in the first part of the, the first little vignette of the one act, the captain of the football team. Which was especially hilarious because I was this scrawny, like I was a senior, but I was like this scrawny, like 18 year old high school kid, like. Wearing these, like, giant football pads, like, carrying this helmet and this huge bag of athletic gear. And I had this, like, I developed this, like, horribly done, like, purposefully bad southern drawl accent. And the scene, the scene is, like, about this girl who's a freshman, I think. Probably. So and these two girls. Different in that play. Well, okay. So the, the scene, the scene in the beginning, has three characters in it. It's the the senior like quarterback, captain of the football team character who I played. Um, another one of the actresses played like the best friend who was like really into the like drama that got played up in in this scene, and then the girl who's. She, she was, was like, like voted homecoming, homecoming queen or something, and she, she was, was supposed to go. Well, there, there was something about she was supposed to go. Well, she was she was voted something, and then she was supposed to go as the quarterback's date, based on some like weird school tradition that had been going on for like years and years, and so. The quarterback, the quarterback sort of, sort of like, like approaches them in the library and is very like, uh, well, like, like this, this is what's supposed to happen. happen. And she, she like has this huge like freak out moment where she's, she's like, she's like, like just like shits on him about like how dare he like approach her like this and so on and so forth. And he like has this moment of like, well, I don't like it either. We should not like we should break tradition and not do it this way. And then, and then the scene, like, ends. Like, they agree to that they're not going to do it. But there's, like, this weird, like, oh, maybe they're going to do it because they're into each other kind of, like, subtext. And then the scene just, like, sort of is over. But playing, playing like, a giant character as a small person. Classic. Loved it. Great times. Yeah. I don't What's know. the next piece that we have? I mean, others are just like weird memories or like even fond memories. Because I mean, like. I went through most of mine already. Was mine are either getting yeah, injured like, or almost destroying something. Yeah, I mean, like, I. I really loved doing theater. And like, I like wrote my own show. It was bad. I knew it was bad. Because um, we, we did a playwriting festival. Um, my junior year, where we all wrote one X, um, one of them was incredible. 
Um, she, she did a really good job with hers, and I helped her do tech and lighting and uh, sound effects. I was in charge of the gunshot sound, which we discovered the prime gunshot sound that wasn't just like a button on a board was a one of those like school plastic chairs. It was like blue plastic chairs. Being with a big, no, 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 with a baking sheet leaning against it, and then you hit it with a plastic wiffle ball bat. That's very specific. It is very specific, but I had to sit... So the way they had the stage set up, and we had to do this at... Um, this actually... Their, her show went on to the state um, one-act festival. Or this, wow. like the, 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 the one-act festival between... I guess we only made it to Nova, I think. We did the... Oh, it was like us, like Lake Raddick, Soko was there... Hayfield was there too. Um, but yeah, I had to sit backstage while the show was happening and just because there were four gunshot sounds throughout the whole show. Mm. So I had to like, I just sat there with the script on stage behind a curtain and then just. Okay. <laughs> that was very fun. Um, but we, we all worked really hard on the show. And, that's what it is. Sorry, I, I couldn't remember what, like, when you're doing sound design. Oh, yeah, 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 fully work. Yeah, fully work. Yeah, I, I, helped, I helped her do a lot of, like, fully work in tech stuff, but Eliza really helmed that show, and she she really spent a lot of time working on it, and it was beautifully done. The year that Jacob and I did one X. Jacob, you might remember, you might not. This show that's about, like, the Antichrist, was that a student-written one-act, or was that a... Is that a show? I don't remember, but I think it was written by Carter. If it was written, it was written extremely well. I think it was written. And so, well, the way the show goes, because I don't remember what, what he named it or what the name of it was, or if it was just called The Antichrist... It's, it's about, about this guy who, like, comes home from college to visit his family, and he brings this, like, other weird guy with him. So the show is all, like, it's entirely, like, the family is, like, waiting for their, like, son to tell them that he's gay, and, like, this is his boyfriend. And so, like, oh, there is, there, there is, no, Jimmy the Antichrist. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that's okay. what it's called. Okay. Thanksgiving at the Bailey household takes right. a twist when Jimmy and his new friend Colin return from home, return home from their first semester of college. Jimmy reluctantly outs himself and reveals that he is, in fact, the Antichrist. Yeah, so there's like a big, there's a big scene where the whole family is like gathered and they're like, okay, he's going to tell us that he's gay. And he's like, mom, dad, I'm the Antichrist. I just, I just remember watching that show and, and like, like laughing my ass off the whole show. show. It's hilarious, but it, it was done. It was it was, it was done extremely well. Yeah, it's kind of in one of those like because I did check please, which is in that same vein of like weird humor. Uh, check please is just a series of terrible dates. Yeah, I I remember seeing it. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had I had two characters in it, um, a girl who cried a lot about sports and a girl with multiple personalities, which is incredible. That was that was very well done. I will admit that was very well done. Like worryingly well. Yeah, I worked really hard to kind of make it because we had she had like five different personalities. One of them was a monkey, <laughs> fully just a monkey. Um, yeah. The girl who the girl who was obsessed with sports was really funny. I really liked playing her. And they were also like, you are kind of the only person who could get passionate enough about sports. So we kind of have to make you this role. Jake, what was your favorite show, period? Uh, maybe not that you like were in or did tech for or acted in, but like just period that we did. Or that you saw, rather. Uh, that's, That's very, very helpful, helpful, Jacob. Thank you. I really liked CC's Laramie Project. I really, I really enjoyed Damn Yankees, Yankees because of the device that we built for Chris. So, so Chris, Chris played the devil, devil and there's, there's a couple scenes where he like pulls objects like kind of out of thin air, and, and so. 
Oh, oh right, no, no this is older brother. Robert. Robert. So, so Robert played, played the devil, devil, and there's scenes where he pulls stuff like out of like, like out of kind of out of thin air. And there's a scene in particular where he's talking to Joe, the main character, and um, he like starts to smoke a cigarette. And so Robert had to practice like pulling the cigarette kind of like out of his sleeve and like like having it in his fingers suddenly. And so we built this device that like. He, he, he when he pulled, pulled it out of his sleeve, he like hit a button on his on his wrist. wrist. Sort of like, like think about like think like Spider Man's like web shooters, mm-hmm. but it produced this like puff of flame, so, so that he like conjured it with, with like this evil like Satan magic or whatever because he's the devil. We used we used baby powder, we used baby powder in rehearsal because, because it was like kind of dangerous. Because <laughs> when well when we built it. We, we, like, like almost set a lot of stuff on fire, like, like testing it. it. Yeah, everything in Dim Yankees was almost set on well, fire. Well, I mean, it's, 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 about, it was. it's about the devil. devil. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, so, we had to use baby powder up until, like, the last night of Hell Week, I think, was when we got the go-ahead from Nugent to actually use the fire. Um, and it only it only went off two nights. It did not go off opening night like it was supposed to. Uh, something something malfunctioned or something was wrong with it, and it did not go off opening night. Uh, yeah, I know the entire audi- uh, auditorium was up in flames. Uh, <laughs> but the other the other two nights it went off and it was perfect. The gas from the audience just made made putting that thing together so worth it. But, but I, I really enjoy the Yankees. Um, as, as much as, as like, like as much as, as I bitch about doing it, I, I enjoy the Yankees a lot. Well, practical effects are always so hard too. I mean, we, we did all that blood for Doctor Moreau. Just... The, the knives in the pajama, pajama game. Oh my gosh! Who is Michael's character in the pajama game? Do you remember? Anyway, so there's a scene. There's a scene where they're at like a picnic or something. It's like a company retreat. Yeah. And, and, like, one, one of the managers, managers like, throws knives as, like, his talent. Mm-hmm. And so we had to build this little cardboard, like, kind of device that, like, rolled on stage. And that, yep. since, since I was the smallest tech, I had to hide in it. And, like, he throws the knives at the at the board. And so you're supposed to, like, we had to, like, stick the, the end of a knife out of the board so that it, like, looked like he hit it. And, like, the, like, the knife... Mm-hmm. Because he can't actually throw knives on stage. Like, weird. So we had to we had to build it so that he we could see what he was doing, and that like he threw a knife and like stuck the end was like stuck in the board or whatever, and like this pattern. That was that was a that was probably the hardest practical effect to pull off, I think, because of the you had to get the timing like exactly right. Spraying blood. Spraying blood. Yeah, we had so much blood. Because, so, in in Dr. Moreau, we, we had, since there was so much blood all the time, we had to mix the blood with oh, shit. detergent. Oh, no. No. I had to bite into a blood pack. Eating Tide Pods before they were real. So, I, so, like... The goal was like the that I was, side pods, I was just to pop it with my hands, but my mouth was right there. So like doing it all at once, and like, and then we just had to sit there like covered in blood. Yeah. That was bad. On I mean, as I don't know how to make it, honestly. I, I I was an actor mostly, uh, but I also wasn't ever involved in it more intricate than. Dance. I was I was always involved in everything. I was just that actor that like I was I was Jack an actor all trades, master who knew how to better than yeah. master of one. I was an actor who enjoyed doing tech, who also was friends with the band kids and and musically inclined and could dance. So like you were a band kid. What do you mean you were friends with the band kids? But no, but in the context of theater kids, okay. I am not a band kid. I'm a theater kid okay. who not bands. Right, okay. So, 
In, in my heart, in my heart, I was a bad kid first. On on the note of different different nerds intersecting, uh, we have to break because we are kind of at a while. We're like a, an hour thirty into this. Yeah. Um, but no, this is good. Okay, okay, yeah, we'll be back later with, um, we'll talk off-air about our streaming schedule, and we'll hit you guys on our Facebook page for when we're going to be on playing Stardew Valley, and so we'll post up every time we go live with that, and if you were in theater ever, in high school, community theater, college, let us know, tell us what your favorite show was, um, and we'll see you guys next time on the Dr. Z Show. Adios.